Hey everyone, so today's video I'm going to be making my dad a painting after five years of telling him I'd make him a painting. This video is also an art haul video, um, well an art supply haul video. If you're not really into art haul videos, like if, if it doesn't really interest you, I'll put a timestamp on the screen to where you can like skip to when the painting starts. But otherwise, um, this is what I got, I guess. <laughs> you can probably see on screen right now, I'm unboxing this box from Jackson's Art Supplies. I got myself some art supplies for Reed, which is um, an Islamic celebration. Uh, after Ramadan, we like have a celebration, we get sweets, meet up with family, that sort of thing, uh, and, and presents. We also have it after the month of Hajj in our Islamic calendar. So we have it twice a year. Oh, also a very belated Eid Mubarak to everyone who celebrates. I forgot to say it in my previous video. It was the perfect timing, but um, yeah, sorry about that. Anyways, the first three items that I bought from Jackson's Art Supplies were palettes, plastic palettes. I got these palettes because I've been missing, like I've been needing more palettes for years now. I've only ever had one plastic palette that I just kept reusing over and over and not washing properly. Here it is, yeah, <laughs> that's the one. It's stained permanently with acrylic in inks and stuff like that. So finally I got rid of it. The second thing I got was Actually, wait, no, I didn't get this. This was a gift they gave me. It's, I think it's a St Stabilo white uh, colored pencil. It was really nice of them. Um, I don't know what I'll use it for, but I'll see. <laughs> Anyways, the next thing I got was this white gouache tube. Uh, I think it's 20 or 15 milliliters of um, white gouache by Daler Brownie. I hope I'm pronouncing that brand name correct. And I also got a Posca pen, a white Posca pen. It's uh, 0.7 millimeters. Also, this tiny thing here is a sharpener by, well, like a lead pointer by Faber-Castell. This is my lead um, clutch pen, I think it's called. It's a two millimeter lead. Um, and it's, it's really fun to draw with. I just didn't get the chance because like the sharpener at the back of the like the cap of the pen was really annoying to use and would splatter graphite everywhere. Anyways, this thing here is the butcher tray palette that everyone and their cat owns at this point here on YouTube. <laughs> it just uh, it looks cute and it should work well with watercolors and gouache I think maybe even acrylics. And speaking of acrylics, um, this is the acrylic set I got. It's by the brand Amsterdam, um, and it's their standard series, so it, they're student grade. But I have their big tubes. Like I have, I think four or five colors from their really big tubes. But I needed a general color selection. Like I just had um, just some weird colors that I got, and I didn't really use them. So this video here. I'll be using them for the first time. So during the painting process of the video, like during that portion, I'll give my first impressions and opinion on it rather than trying to cram all that in this small portion here. <laughs> Anyways, this part of the, this, sorry, this next thing I got was a sketchbook and it's the thing I'm actually most excited for. I don't use it in this video because I wanted a painting for my dad to like keep. I didn't want to rip like a page out of a sketchbook. Um, I'm extremely excited to use this sketchbook because I got some advice to basically have a large, uh, good quality paper sketchbook for finished illustrations. That way in my like illo sketchbook, my square one, I'd feel more comfortable to just experiment and um, do loose drawings and sketches and like not feel like everything has to be a finished illustration. Which, um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to use the larger sketchbook. I probably won't use it super often. Like it'll probably last me a year maybe, even though it's only 25 pages, just cause I wanna focus on the Illo sketchbook and really get that done. 
Anyways, here are the, here's the color selection for the acrylics I got. It's a really lovely color selection. That's one of the main reasons I bought this set and I didn't buy more Arteza acrylics. They're just like the perfect pastel colors, the perfect green colors, the perfect browns, and even this really beautiful purple that I wanna use more of in another painting. So yeah, <laughs> anyways. Now I'm starting to show the materials I actually used for this painting. Sorry this intro part is so long, but um, I just wanted to make it clear for people who skipped the art hall what materials I'm using in this part. So um, yeah. So here's when I finally start sketching. <laughs> um, as you can see, I was kind of like indecisive about the angle of the Hobbit house. I had a whole story on Instagram, like whining about how I couldn't decide what to do. <laughs> My dad ended up choosing for me. He said he preferred like the, the far away look of the Hobbit house. That way I can include Gandalf. And to be honest, I'm extremely thankful I chose the like the distant view because oh my god this painting took centuries for me to finish even with like low detail because things are in the distance I'm just trying to imagine doing things close up where I'd have to draw each individual plant and that's just giving me like so much like anger <laughs> the thought of drawing more plants and close up this time with full detail. Imagine drawing each leaf close up. Uh, that would be, yeah. I'm already complaining. I told myself I'd try and be positive in this video, but this painting seriously burnt me out. Anyways, anyways. This part here, I'm wetting the paper with uh, water because I wanted to try doing an underpainting for this, uh, for this thing. And I go in with burnt sienna paint that ended up being a really beautiful color. paper was super warped at this point like the camera doesn't do it justice it was like crazy warped so I put my photo album well baby photo album and a couple other books from university first year of university oh my god the trauma that these book titles give me is just unmatched so yeah just a bunch of heavy books I left it for a couple hours and yeah it turned out flat again, so that's good. So here's when I finally start painting and I started off with the sky, which was the most fun part for me personally. <laughs> like I, I really enjoyed doing the clouds and the skies. I think, uh, like, I kind of wish I added less dark blue in the, in, in the clouds. Like, I wish I made um, the forefront cloud just all white and fluffy. But I could easily just fix that right now. Or I could leave it. <laughs> or I can just leave it and, um, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it. I'm so sick of this painting. But, um, 
yeah, uh, acrylics worked great. They were really fun to use. They didn't dry too fast. And funny thing is they weren't overly shiny. Um, so that was nice. Um, I don't really know what else to say. This isn't a formal review on the standard acrylics. This is more just like a process video and like my first impression. And my first impression was that they were fun and I had a really nice time with it. And um, yeah, this is the biggest acrylic painting I've ever done in my life. So yeah, there was bound to be things that I wasn't happy with in the painting. Um, I'm looking at the tree right now, like with, with so much anger. I don't like how the tree turned out. Um, even though my sister thinks it looks nice and my friend thinks it looks nice, I just don't like it. it, it it's not like the Bilbo tree, so I think one of my main problems with the tree was that I overworked it way too many times. I should have just blacked it all out maybe and then started over and then like like after I got the hang of the grass because this painting is just one big experiment. I didn't do any prep work. I didn't practice doing grass. I didn't even know how I wanted the grass to look like. So. The grass ends up taking ages, but I eventually get it. That's the difference between the grass and the tree. The tree, once it got really hard, I just, um, I reached a point where I said, okay, I'm going to leave it and move on to the grass, which was a good idea because I figured out the grass. Um, like that was, that was a good plan. Here you could see me just muddying up the grass like crazy because I just really don't know how I want it to look. But then I decided, you know, I'll just finish the base color all around and then focus on this left side of the house. And I'm so glad I did that because it basically means I wasn't experimenting in 10 places at once. I was just experimenting in one place. Anyways, um, here's some ASMR acrylic peeling <laughs> in the midst of my rant. Uh, yeah, that's like really bad timing, but Maybe I do need to cool off just a tiny bit before continuing my rant on the grass. Yeah, back to my rant on the grass. Um, I hate grass now. Um, I will, <laughs> even though it turned out good in the end, it eventually worked out. It drove me insane. This is like, I was considering making this video just like a diss track on grass in general. So I'm editing right now and I, I just thought, you shall not pass, more like you shall not grass. <laughs> Even though there's probably more plant types than grass just here, but I've decided to hate grass. So <sighs> it'll take a while for me to heal from this. Maybe me and grass can see eye to eye again one day, but today is not that day. Oh, by the way, this part of the video, like this whole grass issue took about 15, and I'm not exaggerating, 15 draw fee videos to create. So, if you don't know what a draw fee video is, it's um, this beautiful channel here on YouTube named Draw Fee. They're incredible. I love their videos so much and I owe them everything in this painting. They're the reason I stayed sane for like 20 hours, maybe more. It was two weeks and like hours at a time just sitting on my desk dying. I think this is the point here where I got it. Yeah, this is the point here where I finally got the pattern that I needed to like insinuate grass from a distance. And I'm so happy, like I don't, I don't wanna like be happy with my art. I wanna keep hating it, but um, I can't. I have to kind of appreciate, I really like how fluffy the, the grass in that one spot looks um, right over the, like, the left side window thing yeah I'm I really love how fluffy that window looks and every time I look at it I remember the Nathan persona 
If you don't know what the Nathan persona is, again, you have to check out Drawfee and you have to see their persona video. That was that was amazing. I had so much fun just like listening to that and um, crying about the grass and how much more strokes I'd need to do. Oh yeah, this is when I finally spread to the bright side of the house. So that's my point, kind of like I had to figure out and discover how I wanted to do the left side before before like branching off to the right. And I know a lot of people say you need to spread the details equally, but I kind of disagree for my process because sometimes I just need to figure things out from scratch. So that's what I did and it saved me a lot of time probably because I'm just trying to imagine if I tried muddying up the entire thing all at once. That would have probably killed me. <laughs> Anyways, I included some bluish tinted uh, trees here and there. I don't know if they're trees or not. I have no idea what they are. Bushes maybe? Yeah, they're probably bushes. But I included the bluish tint just for variety. I started working on like fun details like the chimney. The chimney was probably one of the funnest details to do. Um, and I say one of the funnest because funnest isn't a word and because Gandalf exists. I can't wait to show the process for Gandalf. That was just so cute. But the fence, uh, the fence is nothing really special to be honest. I just um, rushed it and put some random brush strokes. I decided like it's not supposed to look realistic. It's just a uh, impressionist kind of and like it's illustrative in a way. So that's kind of what saved me with the grass. I realized I'm supposed to be doing just like little strokes here and there, not too much details. Yeah, this was honestly crazy. The amount of details that I had to keep adding. The pumpkin was kind of fun, but not as fun as I thought it would be. And if I'm being 100% honest, I'm not really happy with its perspective. But again, I'm overanalyzing at this point. I do want to stress that like, I love the overall like look of the painting. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. And especially for my first environment painting with acrylics, I think like, um, like I think I did as good as I could possibly do with like my skill level. And looking back, it was a fun experience. I just wish I, uh, I don't know what I wish, but I wish something happened. Anyways, here's a traumatic part where I just finished all the, like the wall thingy, the, I don't even know what it's called. My brain is mush right now, but I had to redo the entire thing because I realized the tint was wrong. And right now, um, like looking at the final piece, I wish I made it even warmer. At the start, it was just this really cool gray and that, that didn't look good at all. I wish I pushed it to be even like more warm than it is at the moment, but it's okay. Okay, this is the moment of truth when I finally paint Gandalf. It was so fun painting him. I wish I could paint him like all over again. It's just so tiny and cute. Like even the horse was a lot of fun. I was worried about the horse. I thought it would look disgusting with acrylics because always in my mind, when I think of acrylics, I think no details, like super like blocky or whatever, but it, it worked. It worked really well. And um, I just had to make an impression of a horse. It had to just look vaguely like one. And like, I don't know. I, I think uh, I had a lot of fun because of how just simple it was. Here's when I finally decided that that was enough detail. I just want to stress how hard it is to just leave a piece and decide like that's it, enough details, enough everything. Because sometimes when you're watching an art video or like when I'm watching an art video, I just feel like, oh, they knew exactly they were finished at that point. And like they started peeling the tape, they, they knew it was perfect at this point. But in reality, I had no idea like whether I should be peeling at this point. I felt there are just so much more things I need to add, but I was also really burnt out and like not, not in a bad way, like not 
oh, I'm never gonna paint again. Just, I shouldn't be painting for at least a week sort of way. Um, so yeah, I started peeling it and I felt like I added enough details kind of anymore and it would kind of take away like the, the charm in a way. I don't, I don't know. Anyways, I didn't want to fix the tree because I'm lazy. There's, there's no other excuse. I was just lazy and I didn't want to deal with the, I didn't want to deal with that tree trauma again. I was done with grass and most importantly, I was done with the color green. I, I never thought I'd say that before, <laughs> but I basically made myself like sick of painting with green. I still love green, it's still my favorite color, but I don't think I want to paint with green for, for a while. final reveal I guess of the painting sorry for the really long outro I'm about to do I'm about to show like every possible angle of this thing that I worked for two weeks on um I'm pretty happy with how it turned out I really like the fluffy grass and I think the stonework looks cute and like unrealistic but cute I also really love how like the doors and windows turned out. I love the yellow that I use. It's a little more bright than it is, or like warm than it is in the movies, but it's okay. <laughs> I also really enjoyed and like had fun with some of these details like the door and of course Gandalf and his carriage. Those were really fun and like I'm happy with how they turned out. But like all things, it can't all be perfect. And there are some parts I'm not happy with, such as the tree and the tree and, um, oh yeah, also the tree. But overall, I feel like I did my best and I'm just really glad I got to make this painting for my dad, finally. And uh, it should go nicely with his Lord of the Rings sword that he keeps in his office. So I'll show them both together maybe. Uh, I'll have to catch a clip of that. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. It really killed me, this one. And also, if you have any questions about the supplies, uh, especially the acrylics, please let me know. I'd be very happy to answer them in the comments below. And if you have any acrylic painting advice for me, please let me know that as well, because I could seriously use some tips with that. And uh, tree painting in general. Tree painting advice is very, very appreciated. <laughs> Anyways, that's enough of my rambling. I'll see you all in the next video, uh, which is going to be a surprise video. It's gonna have a nice twist to it. Bye.